This is Anarchast. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Anarchast, your home for anarchy on the internet. Coming in today from Chicago, from the floor of the Comex, is Trey, uh, Trey Nippa. Uh, he does a number of things, including he is a trader, and he also uh, really specializes in, in shorting Japanese government debt, which actually I talk a lot about at Dollar Vigilante. I've been saying for a number of years that I think the Japanese yen and the Japanese government and the entire thing over there, the bank, Central Bank of uh, Japan, will be the first to fall. Um, and so it's uh, uh, going to be interesting, and we're, we're going to talk a lot about that. But first thing I have to ask, though, Trey, is how did you become an anarcho-capitalist? Well, that, the answer to that question is very simple. If I could identify one mechanism where governments get involved in an economy, in a, in, in, a, in a country as a whole, if I can see one positive benefit to any of that, I might change my mind. But I am so tired of seeing government intervention, be it in regulations, and the more proof I see that if you were to strip away a good part of that regulatory body, the markets would be better off. The, the, the strength and risk evaluation ultimately lies with the individual. You know, the SEC passing judgment on something or a rule, this, that, and the other. Well, you know, when Bernie Madoff stole all that money from those people, well, I would imagine that 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 those rules were already in place. <laughs> so, so maybe it was just in, it, maybe it was incompetent regulators. So, if but if maybe the fact that the the SEC had sort of passed judgment saying, oh, you know, this guy's operating legally, maybe that's part of the reason that his invest investors got duped. So I'd say the SEC is probably as much of a cause of that as anything. So as long as you're, as, as long as I can operate on the whole idea that it is up to the in, that is ultimately up to the individual. Well, there you go. There, there's there's your answer to the question. That's why I became because I do not see benefits to governments being involved in free markets. Yeah, that's one thing that a lot of business people see. People who are involved in the economics, finance, business. Uh, most of them, if they have their eyes open, uh, they realize that there's there's no value at all to any of these regulations. As you just pointed out, Bernie Madoff did all those things under these regulations, uh, and, and all kinds of even way worse things happen and are allowed uh, by the government regulators. And like you pointed out, uh, all it does is give a lot of people a, a false sense of security, thinking, "Oh, there's somebody watching over me," uh, when in actuality, it's just a bunch of bureau rats. Uh, that just do things every now and then and mostly just screw things up. <laughs> Indeed, you and I see eye to eye there, Jeff. <laughs> So let's get into uh, one of your real focuses. You're, on, I forgot to mention earlier, you're regularly on CNBC, uh, uh, Bloomberg, Fox. Uh, you're going up to Canada this week uh, to uh, be on uh, the top uh, Canadian financial channel, BNN, for two hours straight. That'll be great. Um, and so you're, you're very involved. In, and one of the things you really talk about is the Japanese government debt situation. Uh, why don't you give us a brief overview to tell uh, people who have never heard about these sort of things before uh, why you think this is uh, such a interesting and, and a good time to be getting involved in shorting Japanese government debt. No problem. So for me, this was all born. Um, I was down on the floor of the Merck one day. So I'm, I'm here at the Merck. Now the Merck owns all the exchanges. They own the Board of Trade, the COMEX. But I'm actually down the floor, and I would apologize for some of the audio quality because the market right now, as we're taping this, the market's still open. So there's still some traders over in the S&P pit pushing and shoving and doing their thing. And that's what I do. So, you know, I, I would answer the obvious questions. But everybody asked me that the outfit that I wear and my, my badge and all this stuff. Uh, I went to Baylor University and Waco, Texas. That's why my symbol is Waco. Uh, down, that's the obvious thing that everybody wants to know. Um, I'm happy to answer individual questions. If somebody wants to send me an email, by all means. I'm, I'm, I live and breathe for this job. I moved to Chicago in 1996 with $400 in my pocket to do the job that I have now. And, 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 and I, was really, I really believe I was, I was born to do it. But the, Jap the Japan story for me started the, the, down on the floor of the Merck. We've got big TVs uh, like Diamond Visions at a baseball game. And one day I look up and I see a guy that I happen to recognize by the name of Kyle Bass. Uh, the listeners right now, write that name down. Kyle Bass, go on YouTube, search Kyle Bass, and watch some of the videos that he's talked about. You're talking about a guy that was smart enough to short housing in the United States when housing rolled over and he owned some credit default swaps. His fund did. He's based out of Dallas, Texas. I'm obviously a Texan as well, um, given my jacket and, 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 and chosen uh, uh, symbol down on the floor. 
So I saw him speak. I recognized him from my days at Prudential Securities in Dallas. I say, oh, you know, I remember him. So I started doing my homework about what he was talking about. And in that speech on CNBC, he said that one of the most obvious things in the history of finance was what was going on in Japan. So that piqued my interest. And then he said the magic words. He said, and you can buy enormous option positions for very, very low uh, very low prices. So I said, well, this sounds like a great opportunity. So I started doing my homework. I went to the Japanese Ministry of Finance website, started researching the accounting, this and that. I decided that I thought he was right. Well, go, by the way, here's a, here's a guy who shorted housing in the U.S., then turned around and shorted Greek debt before Greece had its default. So this is a guy who obviously knows what he's doing. So once I, conv I was convinced his thesis was right, then I said, hey, I'm in. So I called his fund and the minimum, I mean, he's a, he's a big institutional investor. The minimum was 10 million something dollars. And I said, oh, I, you, know, the, uh, you know, I'm not gonna write a check for that. So I'm a trader, I do this for a living. Surely there's a way that I can manage to get some exposure to this market and get some of that risk, ex some, of, some of that risk on, shall we speak. I wanted the trade on and I basically came up with an idea to reverse engineer it in a way that I felt comfortable with. And the more research I did, the more I found out that there's a whole lot of ways that you can execute this trade. So before we get into the nuts and bolts of how I'm going to do it, let's back up a second and let's talk about why. It's common to compare countries by their debt to GDP ratio and anybody who studies Japan knows Greece had a debt to GDP ratio of 160 percent so here's the size of their economy and here's their government debt and their government debt was more than one and a half the size of the time times the size of their economy that to me seems like a weakness Greece as you know had a default Japan their debt to GDP ratio is 260 percent now the first question here is why how did this happen this is a very simple history lesson that I know everybody's going to, everybody's going to, it's going to sound very familiar. In the early 90s, Japan had a real estate bubble that popped. And so you had all these people that were doing, buying and buying more real estate. They were consuming based on the value of their real estate going up. Hey, my house is never going to go down in value. At one point, you know, I think one square inch of real estate in Tokyo was equivalent to a thousand square feet in New York. I mean, you talk about a massive real estate bubble and they were in the middle of it. So clearly, if the banks are willing to loan money against those assets and then those assets roll over in value, suddenly all those loans get kicked back on the banks. So the banks came under enormous pressure. So here we've got a real estate bubble that pops in Japan and those banks should have taken those losses. Those people that borrowed that money, they should have declared bankruptcy. You cannot have capitalism without bankruptcy. It's like having Christianity without hell. It just doesn't work that way. You've got to let these companies go and these companies and these bankers go under. And guess what? Here comes here comes the Japanese government to the rescue. Mission number 1. All right, we've got to have a big stimulus package. We have to have a, a TARP type program. They come in, they bail out the banks. Then the next thing you know is, wow, this economy is really moving slow. We've got to encourage consumption. Here we go again, the big Keynesian story. So we've got to encourage consumption. We need the government to step in and spend. That will prime the pump. That will get things going again. So how did they fuel that? Well, they followed the Paul Krugman method. And they said, it's okay to finance with debt. Debt is absolutely acceptable. Borrow some money, Mr. Government. Go out and spend. Get consumers to spend. And oh, by the way, here comes the Bank of Japan. Bank of Japan lowers interest rates to zero. Thank goodness. Oh, we can't have savings earn any money. No way. We've got to increase. The, we've got to devalue the yen. We've got to get people out consuming, and everything will be fine. So that was in 1991. What is the size of the Japanese economy now that they have a 260% debt to GDP ratio? One would think, well, they've done all that spending, they've done all that borrowing, surely the economy in Japan has turned itself around. Well, the economy in Japan is exactly the same size today as it was in 1991. Whoops, this seems to me to be a complete repudiation of the entire Keynesian economic theory that the government should go in and pay these and, and borrow all this money, encourage spending, et cetera, et cetera, encourage government spending, the whole bit. And it has not worked in Japan. So when we talk about debt to GDP, that is what, what I would call a balance sheet discussion. Let's talk about an income statement discussion because this is where Japan, the, most, most of your viewers right now, they're going to push away the computer and go, this is impossible. How is this even happening? So right now, if you look at the income statement of Japan, an income statement of any country is going to have 
income on one side, which is taxes, uh, revenue generated by fees, and that sort of thing. And then you're going to have the expense side. The expense side is going to include things like your military, Social Security, interest on outstanding debt, that sort of thing. A quick view, and you can go right to the Japanese Ministry of Finance website and see this. It's not like I've, it's not like I've dug up some magical numbers. It's all right there. Go look at their financial statement. Japan spends twice what it makes in tax revenue. Can you imagine an individual who spends $100,000 a year but only makes 50? How long is that sustainable? Not very. Now, let's look at the expense side of that, of that financial statement. If you look at the expense side, the, just the interest on their outstanding debt is half of their tax revenue. It's 25% of their total budget. So now let's go back to that the person who spends $100,000 a year, they only make 50, and of that 50, 25 of it goes to just interest on their debt. Now here's the fun part. If you look at the yield on a 10-year bond in Japan, this morning it hit, hit 0.48. Note the decimal place, 0.48. You've got investors standing there willing to get a return of less than half a percent, 48 basis points a year on their investments by owning a Japanese government bond. Why would anybody do that? Well, the individual investor is not driving the market there. It is the Bank of Japan. In April last year, not this year, but the April prior, the big rescue plan for Japan came out. Mission number one, my goodness, we've got to devalue the yen. Oh, I, by all means, please tell me where that's worked. If we devalue our currency and hurt our citizens, that will improve our economy. Awesome. Give me one example of that being successful anywhere in the world. There isn't one. So now, if we devalue our economy, and by the way, I think that when Japan has its debt crisis, which I think it's, is, is in, it's, it's inevitable, it's just math. There's no way they can pay this back. The chances that they can pay these bonds back, in my opinion, is zero. So when they have a debt crisis and they, okay, fine, let's scratch out the, the, the term crisis because it's inflammatory. When they restructure their debts, when they declare bankruptcy, which I believe they will, then you're going to, number one, all those people's savings that is stuffed into this, that, it, that is stuffed into those bonds, when the market finally re- prices all these assets, I think these va assets are grossly overvalued. But when all this happens, there's going to be a book written about it. And I believe that the book will read like comedy. For instance, look at what the leader, Shinzo Abe, look at what his plan is to save the Japanese economy. My goodness, we've tried everything. We've tried increasing spending. We've tried lowering interest rates. We've tried all manner of tax incentives, this, that, and the other. Never mind their corporate income taxes are as high as the United States. Gee, I wonder why businesses don't want to move there. Tough to imagine. But I believe that the book will read like comedy. For instance, right now the Bank of Japan has a 2% inflation target. Who would want to own a 10-year bond yielding 0.48 if you have inflation at 2%? That is a loser, plain and simple. So be careful what you wish for, Bank of Japan. When you say, hey, I, I, I need 2% inflation, 2% inflation is the last thing that they need. The holders of those bonds are going to say, hmm, here's another, here's another very, very misunderstood uh, bit about finance. What some people think is that a country can come to a fork in the road. And they can say, well, our bonds are in real trouble. We're having trouble financing our own debt and financing our spending. So we're going to create a weak currency in order to protect our bond market. It's almost like, well, uh, you either have a bond crisis or a currency crisis, but you can't have both. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Historically, that is inaccurate. Remember what a bond is. A bond is an IOU. So I give the government money and they give me an IOU. So I'm going to hold on to this IOU for 10 years, and you're going to announce that Japan in April of last year announced that they were going to double the money supply in Japan. Really? So I'm holding a bond, and you're going to pay me back with devalued currency. What happened to bonds? They announced, if the, if the United States government announced that they were going to buy an unlimited amount of wheat, I would imagine wheat prices would go up. They, the Japanese government announced that they're going to buy an unlimited amount of bonds. And what did bonds do? They went down. They went down quickly. Because why would I wait as a bondholder to see how bad you can devalue the currency that you're paying me back in? A weak currency yields a weak bond market. It doesn't protect a weak bond market. Far from it. So when all this happens, 
They're going to say, wow, we weakened our currency too fast. We tried to create inflation. All those things are an, a, the enemy of a bond market. They're enemy of borrowers, not, not the friend of borrowers. So as I sort of position this and as I, as I look, I, I think that they're just doing everything they can is wrong. And now guess what? It's starting to show up in the data. So if the idea is we need to weaken our currency, if we weaken the yen, then exports will explode and we'll all live happily ever after. Great. So if you weaken the yen, then the export should have gone up. And if I export more than I import, that creates what's called a current account surplus. And I can use that current account surplus to finance some debt. Hey, great. It's almost like profit for a country. Hey, I, now I, I export more than I import. I've got profit. I can use it to finance debt. Great. Everybody wins. So they devalued the yen. And suddenly, Japan now has the largest current account deficit they've ever run. Wait a second, that doesn't make any sense. Here's why. Japanese companies have already moved their manufacturing facilities offshore. You know why? They can't afford the workers there. So they have every incentive in the world to offshore that manufacturing. And you know what else Japan does not have besides a workforce that's going up? Japan also does not have an, a, a supply of natural resources like energy. So remember back the Fukushima story here? Here comes the tsunami. It wipes out their nuclear reactors. So suddenly they're having to use coal to produce electricity. Well, they have to import all that stuff. They have to import their energy uses. So now, though a weak yen actually makes all those imports cost more rather than less, and it, ex and it accelerates their current account deficit. Whoops, not part of our plan. That's not what we meant to do. So all of this is just, in my opinion, this is politicians trying to hold on to their jobs. This is the vested interests among, among Japan. They want to keep everything just the way it is. They don't want big changes. Guess what? Things are going to have to change there. Uh, did you, do you realize that the population in Japan peaked three years ago? Earlier when I talked about the financial statement, I talked about how one line item is interest on their current debt, the interest on their outstanding debt. You know what another line item is? Social Security. Well, if you've got an aging population like Japan does, does anyone realize that by 2030, you're going to have one worker for every three retired people in Japan? Gee, Karnak the Great here predicts that Social Security expenses in Japan are going to go up over time and not down. What else does Japan have? Zero immigration. You cannot immigrate into Japan at all. It's a big closed border. I mean, dare I say, a lot of the society there is, is out and out racist. Some, some people call them nationalists, but they're racist. They don't want, oh, oh, we don't want any of these outside workers coming in, stealing our jobs. The best thing that could happen to Japan right now is open the doors, bring these people in and get them to work. Because guess what? You increase GDP one of two ways. There's only two. You increase productivity and you increase population. That's it. One or the other. Increase productivity, increase population. So when you double the money supply, which one does that do? Does it increase productivity? No. Does it increase population? No. So I find it odd that they're just doing all the wrong things there. So to the to the to the to your viewers, so what? What are, what what does this mean? In my opinion, I think there's opportunity as their bond market works its way down. I think that day is coming. I think there's significant opportunity there. It's going to come with risk for certain. But the options there are very, very cheap. And I'm going to tell you, we're going to, here in a second, I'm going to wrap up with what I think might be the scariest piece of data regarding Japan you can ever imagine. But we'll get to that in a second. That's, that we're going to call that a teaser. How's that? So, but the individual investor, there is ways that you can and should be involved. Me, I manage a fund. My fund has two distinct strategies. One of them is I'm using options to acquire a levered short position against Japanese government bonds. Number two, I think that even on the smallest level, individual investors should have some short exposure to the yen because if we want to compare it to the U.S. dollar, the yen today is at about 102.50 to 103 to the dollar. That's where we're trading at right now. I think the Japanese yen goes to three or four hundred to the dollar. I have a rent house in suburban Houston, Texas that I have the mortgage in yen. I'm collecting the rent in dollars, but as the yen weakens to the dollar, it takes me less of those dollars to pay if, 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 my, if my mortgage payment is fixed and the amount of yen I borrowed is fixed. 
but I'm collecting my rents in dollars, then it takes me less dollars to make that yen payment as the yen gets weaker and weaker. I think the yen goes to three to four hundred to the dollar because the Bank of Japan has no choice here. They're the buyer of last resort for Japanese government bonds. So the yen, to me, has no place to go but down. There's ETFs for this. There's FX ways. You can do this on a very, very small scale. But I'm going to take this one step further. In my fund, I am short the yen. But I'm short the yen in gold. So my position is long gold, short yen. Put that position on and open, put it in a drawer and open it 10 years from now and see where it's at. I think that, you know, based on what you think gold could do, then if you take the dollar to 400 of the dollar, that means you're buying $1 of gold and you're only spending 25 cents if you're short the yen and the yen goes to 400 of the dollar. So I... I I don't want to be long. I don't want to be short the yen outright because that puts me long U.S. dollars. Well, what in the world is the U.S. doing that's dollar positive? No way. So long gold, short yen. That is a basic position that virtually anybody can execute. It's not that hard. It's also scalable. You can put on a very small position. Just to, if you believe my thesis, there is a way that you can put on a very very small position to have some exposure to long gold, short yen. So there you go. For the more sophisticated investors, we should talk. There's a variety of ways that you can execute this. Now, I said a minute ago that there's a piece of data that scared me more than anything. The reason the options on Japanese government bonds are so cheap makes me want to throw up. And here it is. If I'm a bank in Japan and I have a portfolio of bonds, I own some 10 years, some 5 years, some 1 years, whatever. I own this portfolio of bonds. What the banks in Japan are doing is they are going below the market and they are shorting, they're selling the insurance against the very assets that they own. You know why? They're trying to enhance revenue. They're trying to enhance the yield. So the way they look at it, imagine this, Jeff, imagine you and I partnered on a rent house someplace and we buy this rent house and we rent it out and we find that the rental income isn't quite what we wanted. We wanted 1500 a month for a rental property, but we're only getting 1000 so you and I go out and we short fire insurance against our property to a hundred other different people. You say, hey, you want to buy a fire insurance on my house? No problem. And we sell that premium to a hundred different people. Well, what that does is, is if the house doesn't burn down, great, you and me, we keep, the, we keep that fire insurance premium. Awesome, big winner, right? The Japanese banks are long the bonds and short the insurance down below. So that means if the house burns, not only do I lose the asset itself, now I have to turn around and pay the insurance policies. By the way, this should sound familiar. AIG did this in 2005, 6, 7, and 8. They were long mortgage-backed securities. More, they went and shorted the insurance, the credit default swaps that guys like Kyle Bass bought they shorted the credit default swaps. Then when the mortgages started going down like this, not only did the asset drop in value, but now AIG has to start paying off all these insurance premiums to Goldman and Kyle Bass and John Paulson and all these other guys. One of the big holders of those was Goldman Sachs. Luckily, Hank Paulson sat at the head of treasury. I'm sorry. And so here he comes to not head of treasury, but uh, um, here comes Hank Paulson to says, hey, we need a bailout so that so that, that that AIG, if we bail out AIG, then Goldman, for obviously former Goldman executive, suddenly all those insurance policies that Goldman owned, that, that AIG shorted to them, well, my goodness, we got to bail out AIG. That, that way Goldman gets paid off on their bets. But be that as it may, that is what's going on in Japan. You've got the banks long the bonds, they're short the insurance, and when this goes, and it will move hard and fast because all the buyers of Japanese government bonds, they're already there. So individual investors start with the yen. I prefer long gold, short yen. I can show you how to execute that trade for more sophisticated investors, assuming the risk tolerance is there. The, the real opportunity is in the bonds. When this market moves, it is going to make Greece, Greece, Greece adversely affected the U.S. stock market when they defaulted two, two or three summers ago. Greece has the same GDP as the state of Indiana. No, no disrespect to the Hoosiers that are watching, but Greece doesn't matter. Japan has the third largest economy in the world. If Japan restructures its debt, you bet it will adversely affect the world economy. So I've got some clients of mine who use my fund position as a hedge. And quite frankly, they've got money in there and their instructions to me are explicit. Trey, don't you ever call me. 
Trey, if you call me, I know that there's real, real problems because our position is working. And, and, they, and my, my dad and I had a long conversation down in Texas. He looked at me one day and he said, Trey, he said, why wouldn't somebody have at least some exposure if they've got larger investment portfolios? They've identified this particular risk. If this risk is out there, why wouldn't I have something to protect me in that risk and hope that Trey is completely wrong? And a lot of my investors are that very thing. They really do hope that I'm wrong. Yeah, well, I know you're right. Um, uh, and that's why I wanted to have you on is because uh, you are an anarchist, anarcho-capitalist. Uh, so we always trust people like that a lot more than uh, most people just in general. Um, and also, uh, you talk about a lot of the same things that I've been talking about at the Dollar Vigilante. Of course, the name Dollar Vigilante, I got that from the old bond vigilantes. And in, in the 80s and 70s, there used to be people, including people like George Soros, who's now turned into a really horrible person, but he used to be okay, I think. And um, they used to, whenever they saw governments get out of control with either spending or uh, printing too much money, bank, their central banks printing too much money, they would short their uh, government bonds. And what I realized uh, during the last decade was that it's, it's really hard to short the bonds in this sort of environment. Uh, until they, everything starts to collapse, and that's going to start to happen now. Uh, so what we like to do is short short the currency uh, by by buying things like gold and things like that. And another great thing about uh, what you're doing in shorting government debt is that there's no there's no better position to be in as an anarcho capitalist uh, than shorting government debt. So I uh, really uh, like what you're doing. Um, I, I have maybe one final question. We shouldn't keep this too long, uh, but uh, do you have any sort of time frame on, on when things might really start to go off the rails in Japan? Japan just printed a negative 6.8 GDP. The next step is here they've been pressing this button that isn't working and in April they decided to press the button really really hard. We need to really expand our monetary policy and now it isn't working. There is no turning back and the news in Japan continues to get worse. They had an increase in sales tax because the IMF said listen you guys better get your debt situation squared away. Otherwise, we're going to really look at you poorly. Okay, let's forget that the two largest contributors to the IMF are the United States and Japan. So I think that's kind of funny. But here they said, you better get your act together. Otherwise, there might be some more downgrades, this and that. So what do they do? They raise sales taxes. So, oh, good. We're going to raise sales taxes. That means consumers will run out and they'll buy a bunch of stuff before the sales tax go up. And the GDP went up. The minute the sales tax increase came in, guess what? Taxes, when you rate, if you want to destroy something and you want to make something go away, tax it. So here in the case of Japan, they're having to raise taxes to generate revenue to satisfy the IMF and the rating agencies, and that is only slowing their economy down even worse. So the news is as bad as it can get in Japan, in my opinion. And this is one of those things where people are going to sit around, they're going to say, well, you know, it was a long time coming, and it'll eventually happen, and I'll, and I'll get involved. When this happens, it is a month from start to finish. It is the bond market starts down. The Bank of Japan steps in and says, we're going to buy a lot more of them. And the bond market says, yuck, because the yen starts really accelerating. The yen accelerates, and you get a feedback loop. The yen weakens, bonds weaken, because the bondholders are going to go, I don't want to get paid back into valued currency. Then the Bank of Japan steps up to hold up the bonds. They print more yen. The yen weakens, and here we go. When it happens, it's a month. So some small exposure somewhere, because when it happens, it's going to happen fast, and it's going to make Lehman Brothers look like a picnic. Yeah, by the sounds of the uh, traders in the background, it might be happening right now. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no, I agree. This will happen fairly fast when it starts to happen. And I do think Japan will go before the U.S. Uh, bonds and the U.S. dollar all collapse. Um, uh, it, it's just uh, they're, they're more advanced. Uh, they, they have worse debt. They have uh, almost all their stats are worse than the U.S. right now, which is hard to believe because the U.S. is so bad. They have a 16 uh, so, year head start. They're, yeah. they're doing the exact. So I, I'm from Texas, so everything's a football metaphor. I apologize. <laughs> but what I find peculiar is, is why are we not learning? Why aren't we looking over there going, wow, here's what they're doing in Japan. And wow, that's not working. The United States is doing the same exact. We have their playbook and we're following their playbook to AT, which I completely don't understand. So we should be looking at Japan going, wow, that, that looks like a real problem because guess what? The United States might be setting itself up for a two or three decade era of slow growth because we're following the same pattern that Japan is. 
Yeah, I think it's going to be even worse than just slow growth. I think it's going to be brutal. But uh, so, yeah, it's really uh, important uh, to uh, look into uh, have if you have some equity, have some capital to look at uh, uh, doing some of these things. So maybe, Trey, you can let people know uh, how they can contact you or how they can get more information on how they can uh, short the Japanese government debt. No problem. Uh, number one, I've got a website, shortjapandebt.com. Go on there. Say that you saw me on this. I realize that I talk too fast. I talk too loud. You got traders in the background, this and that. The specific strategy that is appropriate for each individual investor, it's going to range on size. It's going to range on risk tolerance, et cetera, et cetera. However, this is what I do for a living. Call me and we'll talk about it. We'll say, oh, I want some yen exposure. I want this. I want that. There's a whole variety of ways that you can execute this strategy, assuming that you believe the, 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 the core values of my thesis. If you believe that, then we should talk and, and, and talk about that strategy. So short Japan debt. And then my email is Trey, T-R-E-S, T-R-E-S, at shortjapandebt.com. That's the same email address my mom has. That's going to come right to my phone. So you want to get in contact with me, there it is. Email me there, and we'll set up a time, and we'll just chat it out, figure out what's appropriate. Great. Yeah, and uh, one thing that we didn't mention is it, is, it isn't really all that easy to short Japanese government debt as a regular person, but uh, you know all the ways to do it, and you can help people do that, so you can really get people access to uh, this opportunity. And for people who uh, follow me at Dollar Vigilante, we talk a lot about this sort of thing all the time. Uh, just go to dollarvigilante.com. We just have a free email sign-up, and we send out a daily email. If you like that, you can sign up for our newsletter, and we cover all those sorts of things there. And uh, we'll also be interviewing uh, Trey in a text interview for our newsletter uh, with more specific information coming up soon. So that's it for Anarchast. Uh, glad to have a real true anarcho-capitalist there who's uh, definitely uh, moving and, and, and uh, shaking in, in the financial markets. And uh, and I'm, I'm glad that he's sort of awoken that uh, the government uh, does nothing good for the markets. Uh, central banks do nothing good as well. Uh, all they do is destroy things. And we're going to really see that over the coming years. And so why not take advantage of it? There's nothing more beautiful as anarchists than to uh, make a lot of profits as as and especially as uh, traded uh, and said uh, make the profit in and by going long gold as well so uh, which is another of course uh, a thing that many anarchists like is, is precious metals uh, because it is not government backed money and so uh, yeah check them out check us out uh, and uh, also subscribe down below if you enjoy this sort of content so that's it for anarchast your home for anarchy on the internet peace love and anarchy This is Anarchist.